Okay, so what in the world is holding this still? Okay, so that has to be removed. Okay, that's something I did not know. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, in today's video, we're gonna be doing a little mod type thing, kind of like the one that I did uh, before with the, up on the on the hood, the little um, the little vent thing, taking that off to get more airflow. I actually just found out as well that on these cars on the front bumper, like where the, uh, the air channel is for that air intake, um, there's like a plate or something that's like restricting a lot of airflow. And I saw that they make, uh, they make like a separate thing to increase more airflow, but I saw that some people can just remove it. Um, so I'm gonna try that, but to do that, you have to remove the front bumper, of course, to access it. And uh, yeah, so that's gonna be a, it's gonna be a chore, so we're gonna get into it. All right, car is moved. Now we just gotta get the jack. The only problem with the jack that I have is it's not a low profile jack, like, Kind of need for these cars as you can see it does not fit because the side skirt so i actually one of my friends let me borrow some uh some boards so we can put under the tire so it raises it up a bit and then we'll get the we'll get the jack under there all right so now y'all can see we are up on the boards, both sides, that one's a little bit just kind of like on the edge. And of course it's not going to focus. Um, that one's more like on the edge, but it still still should be good to jack up. I think I might do that side first, just, just in case, but let's make sure that it actually fits. Perfect, just like that. Great, great, great. All right, so we are good to start jacking it up. All right, guys, so what you're going to need is a seven millimeter um, socket and a T15 um, bit. And what we'll need to do, the T15 is mainly for these right here. There's three um, little T15 um, screws right here that need to come out. And the reason we need the seven mil is all along down here. Um, you'll notice it's basically like just a bunch. I'll count them all, but it's a whole bunch um, along the edge, and there's also some more T15s down here. Um, but mostly these T15s need to come out, or these uh, seven mils need to come out. And uh, yeah, so that should be all the underside. And then there's some stuff that we'll do on the upper side and some inside the actual uh, um, liner right here. But we'll get into that after we get all these done. I got all the, uh, all the bolts, all the seven mils, and all the T15s out. Um, quick little side note, um, you can remove the bumper without removing this little skid plate right here, which I mean if y'all seen that one video I put out about uh, hidden damage, you would see that mine is cracked from the previous owner, um, shout out to him, um, but uh, you really just have to remove these up front, and there's right here, one, two, three, four that are holding onto each side, um, you don't have to remove those. The only ones that you have to remove from the skid plate if you don't want to remove it completely is the ones just in the front of the bumper. And there's just, uh, let's see, um, three seven mils. And then the rest are um, the T15s. And that also removes all the uh, scrape guards because there's three of them total. There's one in the middle, um, one on each end that look like that. And you should be good to go. That should be everything that we need to remove underside. I might end up removing this later, but as of right now, we shouldn't have to um, shouldn't have to touch it. So we're gonna move over to the wheel well. This one more up here might not have to remove it. It'll probably make it a lot easier. Cool. All right, so now kind of just move that out of the way like that, and now we got room to work in here. 
Uh, we got one bolt right here that looks like a seven mil that's going straight up. And if I'm not mistaken, there's three. There's three more up along here. There's one, two, and then one all the way at the top, which I don't think the camera is going to pick up. But um, once it's off, I'll show you the placement for it. Or if I can get a better angle, I'll try to get that. All right, guys. So now we can just go under the hood. All right. Should be our last step right here. And okay. Should be our last step right here. We just gotta pry this part up and it'll give us access to underneath. It's been a while since I've done this, but I'm pretty sure that's all we have to do. Now, we should be good just to remove it. Fingers crossed. All we should have to worry about right now is the wiring harness, which we can kind of set this down like so. Hey guys, so after much struggle, finally got the bumper off. Um, the first big thing is I, I discovered there was an extra bolt on each side. This top one right here, this one right next to it, and then the one right here at the bottom. Didn't even notice until really late that there was one more right there in between those two. And then you got this one up here. So total of uh, five right there that you have to remove. And uh, that, that was the first encounter. And then secondly was the tow hook that needed to be removed, which I, I didn't even think about, but I guess I, I figured this part would stay in. Um, with the tow hook, but this part comes uh, comes onto the bumper. So, um, had to unscrew the tow hook, but the bumper is now out. Another thing that I noticed, man, so much stuff under here, like freaking um, insects, just a whole bunch, a whole bunch of rocks and stuff, and just a whole bunch of dirt, leaves, and all sorts of stuff. It's kinda, kinda dirty, so I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to clean it up while it's, while it's, uh, while the bumper's off and stuff like that. Might try to clean up these headlights too a little bit because they're got a, lot of, a little bit of uh, stains in them. So, um, or some stuff that is stained that I can't get to with the bumper on. So I'm trying to make these look really nice. Um, but with, before I do that, I think I'm gonna go ahead and remove, this is the actual, what I was telling you about the restriction plate for the air intake. Here's the channel that feeds the, uh, the air intake. Let's see if we can see it from this side. All right, yeah, you can kind of see right there just that big hole right there um, that's a that's something that feeds into the air intake to um, have some more air go into it, especially like up at the top part up at the top of the top of the bumper um, basically all the air just doesn't get shoved in there and obviously we I mean we got that little we got that little space but removing this is just going to add basically almost it almost seems like it's going to double the uh, amount of air that's going to go in there and that's really what we want we just want more airflow to see like i like i said about that video um just more air in here and more air for the air intake keep it cooler maybe run better and not heat soak as much because <clears throat> all the components are stocked with the heat exchangers and stuff all right guys, so i didn't really record any of this but i ended up taking off all the plastic pieces on the sides where the uh where these radiators are and the little bottom piece right here to clean all all the stuff on it um so if y'all remember how it looked um this is way different way better in the headlights too looks so good compared to how it was um, but yeah I cleaned up all the bugs all the mess and this is just some of it really just piled up here and I swept some of it and used a vacuum on a lot of it so it's it was quite a bit of stuff that needed to be cleaned out so I'm glad I got that out of the way um, I'm about to put everything back together and I forgot to mention whenever I was talking about taking off the bumper really the the last the last thing that was um, tricky to do was removing this wiring harness and it's the only wiring harness and it's on the uh, the driver side and as you can see it has one of these pins with the little push tab the red push tab and these are these all have always given me trouble every time I do them um, and the reason why this one was so difficult especially because it was in a really bad angle like it was right under here right where's it at oh right up here my bad it was right up here <sighs> yeah okay 
So it was right up here on this side and it was just attached down here and just a horrible, really horrible angle to try to get it off but we ended up getting it out and it just has a little um, sliding, one of these little sliding uh, tree clips so you slide it out and uh, you can just stick it back in whenever we're done. We'll plug it back in and stick it in. But that was definitely one of the hardest parts of removing the actual bumper. Not gonna lie, I almost forgot um, to film the whole point of this video to take this little this plastic cover off. Um, and what it looks like is it's just some of these tree clips, which are so freaking annoying. Y'all, please be careful whenever you do this too. I'm being kind of reckless, not gonna lie. Three, okay. So there is all that. This thing blocks all this like area. So like you just get like this little area and then removing this, you get all this space right here. That'll allow airflow to better go into the air intake, which I mean, obviously I mean, it's not that much, but like I said, um, it's, it doesn't cost anything. You just gotta take your bumper off and remove these little three clips and you're good to go. Um, that's all you have to do. I saw that in somebody's video and uh, I saw that they make like a kit. I guess it bolts onto the same little area and I think up here, but it adds like a little scoop that goes straight back there. And I think that that might be something that we look into in the future um, to get. But as for right now, I think this will work just fine. Um, yeah, so now time to put everything back together and hopefully get it before uh, rain comes because this is where we live. All right guys, so we just got the bumper back on. Camaro's back together in one piece. <sighs> Looking very nice. Doesn't look like anything is broken or misplaced. All the um everything is lining up like it should um it looks perfect the headlights look really good that i cleaned and all the all the inside stuff in here all that uh dirt and leaves and and all that sort of stuff is all gunked up up here but looks so much cleaner down there um i'm glad i did that and also i noticed with the bumper on you can actually see um right there that little top screw is where the the old bracket used to um, go up to and you can see where where the airflow goes into the uh, air intake, but it would be restrictive from this part right here Obviously as you can see that's where the top screw went into the top one and the rest of it was covered up by this so that um, Obviously was restricting some airflow. So hopefully um, taking that off We will see and see if we can see an improvement on uh, doing that and like I said they make I saw a company that makes like a a redirection so that it, it it intakes more air than just having it like this but just doing this for for the time being for me is fine I don't, I don't really care about getting the other one unless I notice any change with this then I'll then I'll see but uh, I think this paired with um, doing this every time we like go racing or do anything um, we'll see big differences with with cooling down this this motor and the supercharger but uh, the reason why I have to put this back on is for um, mainly like if it rains it dissipates the water to not accumulate in certain areas I suppose so um, that's why I have that back on but with this obviously I'm not going to take it on and off every time we go race so this I saw that we can just take it off one time and be cool with it so I'm going to keep an eye out see if I see any improvements and hopefully we will I feel like we will because that, that's a good bit of air that's uh, getting you know um, blocked off right there but there's only one way to find out um, and that's just to see how it is over time but that is gonna do it for the video, guys. I do appreciate y'all for watching. If y'all got a ZL1 and uh, you didn't know about this and you kinda of wanna get your, your temps a little bit lower and if you go to the track a lot, I would highly advise doing this. It's a pretty simple um, thing to do. Just taking off your bumpers is really the hard part. And uh, it's not even that hard. You can do it with one person. If you got two people, it'll be a breeze. But um, if you plan on doing it, definitely, uh, I say give it a shot. Just take off your bumper. And it's just those three little tree clips. Take off that, that, um, that bracket and you just take it off and store it just in case you might need it in the future but I, I really don't think you would i'm gonna keep mine just in case but definitely give it a shot if you got a zl1 especially if you want to um if you go to the track a lot and you'll probably see an improvement on on air temps more than i would just daily driving but hopefully if you do this video helps you out a lot um if it did be sure to leave a like be sure to comment down below if it did help you out send it to somebody who might have a zl1 and don't know about this and uh, be sure to subscribe, turn those bell notifications on. See you in the next one. S22, ZL1, slide in a rainbow coop. Saw your bitch, mouth drop, what it do? Worry about yourself, bitch, who the fuck is you? Take it to the
tree tail like a limousine when the light turned green.